Can you see this? I hope you can. I am this far out from my first ever competitive marathon in New York City. And you can tell by the smile on my face that I'm getting very, very excited about it. I am five weeks into marathon training, or maybe even six, um, and it's going really well. Thank you for asking. I will do an update in another video. I know it's been a while. But in this video, I wanted to go through four things that are really, really important for me and my running, and I think four things that are gonna be really important for anybody who is aspiring to incorporate running into their lifestyle, or somebody who has already done that, but is struggling to get consistency. Whether it is a couch to 5K, whether or not it's your first half marathon, maybe even like me, you're working towards your first ever marathon, these four things are gonna be crucial to long-term success. The first thing that you should consider are your running shoes, obviously. A few things that I personally look out for that I think will be of benefit to you guys is, firstly, the shape of the shoe. Now, I personally have opted specifically for a wide toe box. I have quite wide feet, I know I'm not alone, but if your feet are compromised in your shoe, essentially squished inwards, you are affecting the ability for your foot to fully move and to fully engage. If they are compromised and squished together, you're just not gonna be able to generate as much power and it will lead to injury. So if you have the ability and if you feel as if you have wide toes, get a wide toe box. They're becoming more and more accessible now online. Highly recommend. The second thing is a wide midsole. A lot of trainers tend to have quite a narrow midsole, so uh, pretend it's like that wide. This one is notably wider. The reason why for me that's really important is especially when you're doing a lot of miles, after a certain amount of time, and for some people it could be very early on, pretend this is your leg. A lot of people when they run, when they land, their knee caves in every time. And if you imagine how many times you are landing during a run, think how many times that movement is being repeated and repeated. And so a lot of people tend to get knee pain. The wider your midsole, the less likely your foot is going to cave inwards. So food for thought, if you are somebody who has always experienced a bit of knee pain, and if you're honest with yourself and if you're carrying a bit more weight than you would like, if you have that kind of tendency with some additional weight, get a thicker midsole, it'll help you a bunch. Um, these cost me around 80 pounds. I wouldn't be too comfortable spending over 120 pounds for like daily driver trainers. Um, so yeah, I'd highly recommend these. On a final note, you want to replace your trainers every three to 500 miles, which is roughly five to 800 kilometers. Whether you're using a running app or simply using pen and paper, the amount of people I see who run in shoes that look absolutely battered is distressing. The difference that you will gain from getting new trainers is honestly like 10, 20%. It really does make a difference. So don't get complacent with the trainers you're running in, prioritize them. The second thing is a smartwatch. I'm not here to sell you one brand over the other. I personally have Apple Watch. I know a lot of people have Garmin. Two things that I would highly recommend you look for in a smartwatch, and to be honest, they're gonna be dead basic features. The first is GPS. You want to be able to track where you're going and more importantly, how far you are going. The number one cause of running injury, in my experience, is running too much too soon. People get the bug, and then all of a sudden they're running a lot, coming from a place of not having done any running. And all of a sudden they're wondering why their body's so sore. The general consensus within the running community is to increase your weekly mileage by 10%. If you have something like a smartwatch, then you can track how many miles you're doing per week and you can ensure that you're not exponentially increasing your mileage every week. The second thing is pace. It's really important to get comfortable with running slow. I know a lot of people, particularly males, they have the mentality of running as fast as they can, as often as they can. That is a one-way trip to injury. So pace will allow you, allow you to gauge how fast you are going, and it will notably tell you on some runs when to go a little bit slower. So smartwatches, really, really useful. 
Next up is software. And I know some people can get a little bit apprehensive of tracking too much data, but trust me, these two pieces of software, dead easy to use, it won't cost you a penny. The first of which is Strava. You're probably already on it. If you're not, I'd highly recommend. Um, there is a paid version of it, but you don't need to do that, honestly. Um, I did do that last year, and to be honest, I was gonna do it this year, but I just forgot. And I think that's a testament to the fact that I didn't feel as if I needed to pay for it. Um, but Strava is a really, really nice way to simply track what you're doing without any of the hard work involved. What I would do normally is I would record my run on my watch, I would go on to Strava after, I would manually upload it, and the amount of information that the watch gives to Strava is quite overwhelming, in a good way, if you love data, but it just gives you so much more information than just you did this distance at this pace. I can see the route that I did, I can see the mileage that I did, I can see the elevation that I did, I can see my heart rate, and I can see if I've got any PBs. Now, let's be honest, if we get a PB, it's quite a nice feeling. So Strava is something that I'd highly recommend to everybody. I have all my clients on Strava so I can look at the data for them and I can therefore progressively overload their runs. It's free, it's a no-brainer, I'd highly recommend. The second piece of software is called On The Go Map. Now I've drawn out a very basic route here and I can continue doing so as you can see. It, it's really easy to use. And the reason why I'm highlighting this in particular is tracking a route is typically behind a paywall. I know on Strava, they have hit it behind their paywall. It's completely free, again, and best of all, I'm using my clients as an example once more, is I can plan out a route, and then I can share that route with them via a URL. They can click on it, and then they can look at the route that I've advised them to do relative to the distance that I've prescribed to them. I think planning out a run and just trying to make it a little bit more scenic is really, really important. Again, running, for me, the, the biggest deterrent is, is motivation in the long term. People struggle with motivation, which I get. But if you plan out your runs and go in a different place to where you normally run, it is motivating, it does inspire you to maybe go that little bit faster, it might inspire you to run with somebody else, it might inspire you to just run in a new area that you've never been. And so these kind of factors all play into that part of that continual strive to motivate yourself. Bottom right of the screen here, as you can tell, you can convert it from miles to kilometers, really easy to use. I use this for my runs now, and this is probably the reason why I don't pay for Strava, because the only reason I would pay for the premium version of Strava is to map out my routes. I can do it for free here. So use the software to your advantage. You will not regret it. The final thing that I think should be considered with running is the clothing. Now, it may seem dead obvious in terms of what to wear, but the material that you're wearing is really important. Often people will run in 100% cotton, and particularly with socks, it is a recipe for disaster because cotton absorbs moisture. And if you're going for, even if it's a 5K, could be on a hot day, the amount of moisture that you will build up in your feet is likely significantly going to increase the likelihood of you getting blisters. Nobody wants blisters. It also means as well that your foot's gonna be moving around in your shoe, so it's gonna become more uncomfortable. Equally, if you're wearing a very heavy cotton top or a pair of shorts, you're gonna be just holding on to a lot of moisture and it's gonna increase your body temperature. It's gonna make the run that a little bit more difficult. So you wanna choose a more breathable material. So whether it's shorts, whether it's socks, whether it's a t-shirt, I'd recommend a blend of polyester and cotton. More so polyester for the breathability factor, a little bit of cotton for that comfort factor. But literally top to tail, socks, shorts, and top, and hat. I'd recommend getting a hybrid of materials. And that's it, guys. I, I could go on and recommend this and this, but honestly, you know, for a lot of people, running is quite a anxiety-juicing experience. And I think the more you keep it simple, the easier it is to overcome that anxiety. And some of the things that I've mentioned there are dead easy once you kind of wrap your head around it. Find some shoes that are comfortable and that actually fit your feet and actually will prevent injury in the long term. Again, midsole stability. Smartwatch, a lot of people have it already, but if you don't, just get a really basic one with GPS and pace tracking. Thirdly, is software. Both of those pieces of software are free. It will help you massively in terms of motivation. And then clothing, you may have already ticked all of these boxes, but clothing again, you can get very cheap clothing. Get a hybrid of material, it's gonna make your running experience that little bit more enjoyable. So, hope this video has helped. Any more questions on running in particular, let me know. And I'll speak to you guys very soon.